You're watching Sun TV, broadcasting to the world from studios in Providenciales, in the beautiful by nature Texas and Caicos Islands. Sun TV, your source for real news as it happens. I'm Iberlia Brew, and I'm happy you could join us for the Sun TV News Brief. The Turks and Caicos Islands could save millions of dollars every year and 75 well-paying jobs could be created if plans are approved to develop a fish farm in Providenciales. That's the view of Mr. Richard Burke, CEO of Caicos Catch, the company that is behind the fish farm project. In an exclusive interview with Sun TV, Burke noted that millions of dollars are spent importing fish to meet the demands of hotels, restaurants, grocery stores and other consumers in the Turks and Caicos Islands each year. He believes that fish farm can produce around 950 metric tons of fish and will be able to adequately supply the local market and also provide fish for export. We expect that uh, this project will create 75 new jobs in uh, offshore fish farming. We expect that uh, we can probably contribute somewhere around $100,000 annually to a combined uh, NHIP and NIB. We expect that um, we can harvest in the neighborhood of about 950 metric tons of warm water fin fish with two thirds of that being exported to uh, the United States and uh, a third of that staying here in the Turks and Caicos Islands and lowering the cost of fish locally here to about $12 a pound. In the United States, Canada and uh, the UK, the average fish consumption is about one third of a pound of fish per person per week. If we accept that we have about 35,000 people in the Turks and Caicos Islands and 5,000 of those people may or may not be subsistence fishermen and may or may not be able to afford to shop locally, we might conclude we have 30,000 people here that consuming a third of a pound of fish per week would be 10,000 pounds a week or 520,000 pounds of fish annually. Uh, if you add to that the 250 or 275,000 visitors to Providenciales that have a one week stay here and add another 80,000 pounds, you now have about 600,000 pounds of uh, warm water fin fish that should be consumed here on an annual basis but isn't because either it's not available or the price is uh, prohibitive. We can assume that, that there's a couple of million dollars easy sent to Miami annually to supply our local resorts and grocery stores. It, it's our estimate that about 90 percent of the fish consumed in the Turks and Caicos Islands is imported from Miami. The money that would normally be sent to the U.S. for a second-rate product can now stay here in the Turks and Caicos Islands economy. In addition to creating maybe 75 new jobs, we'd have another two to five million dollars circulating within our own economy. In addition to that, we spend millions of dollars a year buying horse manure from the Dominican Republic and cow manure from the United States to serve as fertilizer here in the islands. Uh, a five-minute search on the internet will reveal that the most efficient and effective form of fertilizer known to man is is a liquid organic fish fertilizer. So on a project that we're developing here, we'll be able to take the fish off all the excess skin, bones, and, and internal organs and develop that into, a, again, another exportable product that can be exported to the United States or remain here. And that that remains here will keep more dollars in circulations in the Turks and Caicos Islands economy. At a time when locals are crying out of jobs, Brooks said the fish farm would provide alternative employment to the traditional hotel and tourism sector. He explains how the jobs will be created. A reference for the type of jobs that we expect to create here at the conch farm, with these tanks being, with these fish pens being deployed 40 feet below the surface, with a circumference of 80 feet, that puts the bottom of this fish pen at 120 feet below the surface of the water. And these pens have to be serviced on a daily basis by divers and divers qualified to work at 120 feet are professional divers so these are good top quality jobs will be created here. Typically here the Five Keys uh, employees at the fish processing plants get a few hours of fish processing and is at the end of a, of a day. What, what we expect to operate here is a, is a two full-time eight-hour shift processing uh, shifts a day with uh, full-time employment. It, in addition to jobs in the processing facility, we'll have jobs available in um, the hatchery, particularly uh, opportunities for uh, new students of marine biology. 
we'll have uh, work boats and harvest boats, so there'll be opportunities for uh, professional skippers and professional uh, uh, maintenance personnel. Um, the number of, uh, of uh, the amount of machinery and equipment here at the Kong Farm will require us to have a, a new maintenance staff, professional mechanics, and and uh, of course uh, with a staff of 75, uh, a full-time uh, human relations or human resources uh, department. Here in the TCI, there are many persons who make a living from fishing. They go out to sea almost every day and spend hundreds of dollars in fuel, maintenance, and other expenses. It has been argued that fish farming would be a disadvantage to local fishermen, but Burke does not see it this way. I, I don't see this as having any impact on the local fishermen. Uh, I think the local fishermen sell most of their product for about six to eight dollars a pound. So when we hit the market at twelve dollars a pound, I don't think we're going to be a competition for the locals. I think where the advantage will be for us is the the uh, the restaurant that routinely buys a fillet in Miami from a fish purveyor and pays four or five dollars a pound, and by the time it lands with a customs duty and freight, it's up to fifteen or sixteen dollars a pound. Uh, selling product locally here, that's superior product grown locally here in the clear, clean, pristine waters of the Turks and Caicos Islands at a lower price. Why? Burke said the fish pens will be located in a deep ocean off the Turks and Caicos Islands and will pose no threat to the environment. Our project calls for a new 10,000 square foot seafood processing facility here on this site as well as a new 12,000 square foot uh, marine fish hatchery. What we'll be doing is uh, spawning and hatching fish here at this site and transporting them to cages that uh, will be offshore outside the uh, barrier reef and submerged be below the surface. The cages are typically submerged about 40 feet below the surface with another 100 feet beneath the bottom of the cage before the, uh, the bottom of the ocean. We're in the process of developing five species of warm water fin fish. We have four on site here now. Uh, one is local mutton snapper. The second is local Nassau grouper. And we also have uh, cobia and uh, pompano. These are offshore submergible fish pens. They're about 80 feet in diameter, and they would normally be submerged about 40 feet below the surface of the water, outside the barrier reef, where the water is a couple of hundred feet deep and the currents move away from the island. We're looking at deploying in our project eight of these submersible pens, which would give us a capacity of harvesting approximately 950 metric tons of warm water fin fish annually. Uh, the pens are um, a compilation of um, triangles in the shape of a geodesic dome. The rigid side of the triangle is made of a fiberglass plastic composite, and the inner space is made of a screen mesh, which uh, acts as a predator barrier and prevents the escape of the small fish from the cage. The, the pens are deployed about 40 feet below the surface, and the surface is marked with a small float. On a daily basis, a feed boat pulls up to this float, pulls the float up, pulls up a, a line. At the bottom of the line, there's a hose. The hose is attached to a machine on the boat that blows the feed 40 feet down into the cage. Uh, at harvest time, the pens are floated uh, to the surface and the fish are pumped out onto a, a harvest boat uh, of ice water. Four types of fish are presently being kept in tanks at the Kunk Farm where Burke is one of the new directors. The businessman explains that the Kunk Farm is not making any money and this is one of the reasons why they want to get involved in fish farming. In fact, he told Sun TV that the Kunk Farm has not done any exports since 2008, and it will be another four years before they can start exporting again. Uh, we, we're not exporting any product at all now. The hatchery was shut down in anticipation of a redevelopment of the site. And so since the hatchery was shut down and we weren't bringing any new animals on, we were reluctant to export any animals. What we have here in actuality right now is probably 50,000 animals. It's a very small number compared to the capacity. But with respect to redeveloping the, the site, it was all that we thought we could handle at this time. We can begin exporting conch 48 months after Governor Todd and 
Attorney General Hugh Shepard cease and desist their obstruction of our enterprise. A conch has a four-year life cycle. So four years from the time they get out of the way, we'll be exporting conch again. We don't have any conch to export because what we don't want to do is we don't want to deplete our supply. On the other hand, if you happen to be a friend of any of us, all you have to do is say you'd like to have a fresh conch and it's that easy, we give them to you. We have conch here, we just don't want to sell it because we'd, we'd sell it all out, we wouldn't have any. There's a reason this is the only conch farm in the world and there's never ever going to be another conch farm, I can guarantee you of that. And the reason is that no person ever has and no person ever will make any money farming conch. There's, there's no money to be made on it. In the, in the amount of time that this farm's been here, which is 28 years, there's been somewhere in the neighborhood of 22 to 24 million dollars that investor funds come into the farm. And to my knowledge, no investor has ever received a return on his investment. And there's probably five million dollars in debt still pending. So conch farming's not profitable. That's the whole reason we're bringing commercial fish farming to this location in order to support conch farming. I'm Ibro Leah Brew, and thanks for watching Sun TV News. Join us again tomorrow when we bring you real news as it happens, directly to your computer or mobile device.